welcome to Alpha Militaria TV. Thanks very much for tuning in once again and seeing what we're up to. My name is Richard Saunders. Now, um, I'm going to start off by thanking everyone who is already a subscriber to the channel. We do appreciate your support. And if you found us for the first time, perhaps you might want to consider subscribing as well. And you can also support the channel in another couple of ways. There are some links below to our shop and also to some pages on Amazon for some products that I use on a regular basis. And if you go to our website, www.alphamilitaria.com, you'll find a whole range of air gunning uh, features, topics, reviews, hint, hints, tips and tricks and what have you on the website. Now then, <clears throat> we have not reviewed many spring-powered rifles on the channel for, for one reason or another. Uh, we did some underlevers not so long ago, uh, a couple of rifles from Air Arms and a couple of rifles from Virac. But in terms of brake barrels, we haven't really done that much. I think we did one review on a Hatsan, and that's about it. But we're putting that right today with a review of this, the Virac HW95K Luxus. Now, if you're familiar with Virac spring rifles, you'll know that they've been around for decades, and they absolutely dominate the spring, uh, uh, spring-powered rifle market, um, certainly when it comes to brake barrels. You know, BSA has some good rifles as well, Air arms have some great underlevers, but when it comes to brake barrels, you know, Varak is pretty much the only uh, name in the game. And some of their rifles have been around for 50 years or more. The HW35, uh, the HW80, a couple of great brake barrels. Now, I actually grew up in the early 80s with an HW80, uh, which I still have now. It's a, and it's a fantastic rifle. And then there are lots of other uh, more recent rifles the HW90, the 98, um, you know, and, and they, they really have got a great catalogue of fantastic spring-powered rifles. Now, many people think that this one is, is about the best. Now, I'm not going to say whether it, it is or it isn't, but it's certainly very, very good. And it retails from around about £410, £411, which is sort of up there with regards to spring-powered rifles in terms of price. But when you compare that to PCP rifles, you're looking at very much sort of entry level PCP price for that money. So, you know, the decision you've got to make is do I want one of the best spring powered uh, brake barrel rifles money can buy, or do I want one of the cheapest PCP rifles that you can buy? Now, and there's, there's some great, you know, budget PCP rifles out there, but they're not as good as a PCP rifle could be, whereas this is about as good as a, as a brake barrel can be. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through the rifle from back to front, then we're going to zoom in on a few of the key features, and then we'll take it down the range and see how it shoots. So let's talk about the key features on the HW95K Luxus. Now it won't take very long because there's not an awful lot of features on a spring-powered rifle, certainly a brake barrel, because the design fundamentally hasn't really changed in over a hundred years. But it's the way that the, those components are put together that really sets the, the Virac rifles apart from everything else. Um, now the rifle overall is 1,115 millimeters long, which includes this silencer. So it's quite a long rifle and it weighs about 3.3 kilos, which I think is a shade over seven pounds. Now that actually makes this rifle um, in the great scheme of Virac rifles, one of its lighter full powered uh, brake barrels. Um, my HW80 that I had as a kid in the 1980s, and I've still got, now that weighs over 10 pounds with a scope. So this is a, a very handy, very easy rifle to carry around. And a large part of that is down to this very slim, elegant uh, stock. Now, starting at the back, there is a solid rubber uh, shoulder pad. It's not adjustable, it's quite squishy. Actually, it's quite firm, but it's a little bit, of, little bit squishy for comfort. Has a black spacer on it to set it off as well. And the rifle is completely ambidextrous. You have a cheek piece on the right here and a cheek piece on the left. And you also have this high comb, which gives you good access or good eye alignment to a scope, which is mounted on, um, on dovetail mounts. Now, right at the very back of the action, back here, is a, uh, is a safety catch. And anyone who's familiar with uh, Virac Springers will know that the safety catch, uh, and it's the same on all of them, is a cross bolt uh, safety catch. And when you cock the rifle by breaking the barrel, the safety catch is set uh, and it's a button that pops out on this left hand side. And then before every single shot, you have to push it in from the, the left um, to make the gun live. 
Now that can be an irritation to some people. They just forget to keep pushing off the safety catch before each shot. Uh, but I think it's a good discipline to learn. Um, and it's one that you get used to very, very quickly. Now this, this stock, as I say, very, very elegant. Now as a Luxus model, this has checkering on the pistol grip and on the fore end. Uh, it's very good quality checkering as well. Um, and the trigger, so the trigger is um, the, the key point on this rifle and, and indeed on most um, Virox Springers. Um, it is the, uh, the rec it's called the record unit, Virox design uh, record unit. Um, two stages, fully adjustable. It's, it's adjusted by twiddling with this little screw at the back here, which you can access through a hole in the trigger guard. And the record trigger unit, uh, when it was introduced, whenever it was, uh, 50s, 60s or whatever, really um, redefined just what a, a trigger could be like on a spring-powered air rifle, set the bar for all the other manufacturers to try and to try and reach. And it's still up there right now as one of the best triggers you can possibly get on a spring-powered air rifle, if not any kind of air rifle. Um, the two stages are very, very defined, uh, very smooth. Uh, the stop on the second stage is, is unmissable. And then when it lets go, it lets go superbly crisply it really is a wonderful trigger um, and gives you every opportunity to exploit the accuracy potential of this rifle um, <clears throat> now I mentioned this uh, this silencer silencers on springers you know they can be a little bit of a waste of time if I'm honest because a lot of the noise that comes from a springer um, is usually from the mechanical action rather than the muzzle blast but um, obviously there is some muzzle blast on springs like there is on all air rifles. And the silencer does a fantastic job of, uh, of muting that. Now it's on quite a long UNF thread as you can see. And if you look at the barrel, so the barrel is 310 millimeters long and the silencer is probably just over half the length of the, of the barrel. So you know, there's an awful lot of capacity there to, rejoice, to reduce nuzzle, muzzle blast. Now what I would say is that now, I shot this rifle and I shot lots of other Virox springs as well, and they all have a little bit of a twang to them. And at first you think, you know, God, that doesn't sound quite right, but they all do it. And it doesn't really seem to, uh, to affect the, um, the performance of the rifle. It just sounds a little bit kind of not good. So if you are a competent air gun tuner yourself, then it's well worth spending some time um, just tuning this, uh, re-greasing it and what have you to reduce that twang. Um, if you're not a professional tuner, then it is worth getting it into a gunsmith to do that for you because it'll just take any element of that mechanical noise um, away from the rifle and sort of give it that kind of very sort of thuddy kind of sound to it. So I think that's all the components on the rifle. Don't think I've missed anything. What we do now is we'll zoom in on those in closer detail and then we'll take the rifle down the range and see how it shoots. Now an additional benefit of having this silencer on the rifle is that it makes it an awful lot easier to cock. Um, it's pretty easy to cock in the first place, but having the extra leverage of the silencer uh, makes it easier still. Now as with any uh, brake barrel, just give the barrel a slight tap um, to break the action. And then I always tell people who are using springers, that the best way to cock it, and the safest way to cock it, is to put the rifle into your thigh, pull the action down, then put your pellet in whilst you're holding the barrel, and then obviously return the barrel. Now, that whole cocking process sets the safety catch in the back of the rifle, uh, which is great, and then obviously you've got to switch it off before you take a shot. Now, the one thing is, though, that you know, if you... So I've taken the safety catch off now, and if you're lining up on a rabbit or a pigeon and then the rabbit runs off, you can't then reset the safety catch at the back of the action. So you, now you've got a live rifle with a pellet in it that's not on safe. Now the only way that you can reset the safety is to 
take the barrel, break it again, and then just push it down a last half inch or so. That resets the safety catch at the back and you're good to go. So that's a quick rundown on the HW95K Luxus. Next stop, we'll go down the range, see how it shoots. Well, I'm down once again at the beautiful surroundings of Reading Air Target Shooting Club to, uh, to give the Virac HW95K Luxus a go on the range. Now, as usual, I've set a target out at 30 meters and I'm shooting with Air Arms Diablo Field uh, pellets. These, these are 177 caliber, 4.52 millimeter size. So let's see how we get on. I always say to people when they're cocking a, a brake barrel, regardless of the, the safety features, always keep hold of the top of the barrel when you're braking it, just in case that safety feature lets go, stops the barrel flying up and causing damage. I think that's 10 shots, so let's go and have a look at the target and see how we got on. Right, how was that then? Oh yeah, that's not a bad group at all. So that is um, 30 metres, I think 10 shots through there. This is sort of blow back from the, the back of the, the, the pellet hitting the target and bouncing back out again. But that is a group that's got to be a 10 pence piece group. 10 shots at 30 meters, a little bit of adjustment uh, to the right, but uh, yeah, that's not bad at all for a Springer and me with a Springer. Well, there you go. That is the Virac HW95K Luxus. And as I said before, Virac rifles, their Springers are just about the best in the game. And this is a really good example of it. Probably one of the best brake barrel rifles on the market and retails for just over 400 quid. So good value for money. Now springers are all about technique and repeatability, having the same hold, the same pressure of hold the same time so that the gun can recoil in the same consistent way after every shot. But if you get it right and you put in the practice, 
They're really rewarding and every bit as, as accurate as PCP rifles. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already, uh, you might want to subscribe as well. And if you'd like information on the whole Virac range, you can take a look at our website, which is www.alphamilitaria.com, where you'll also find information on a whole bunch of other air gunning topics. Anyway, till next time, thanks very much for watching.